Insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Entertainment a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Your hosts, Joseph and Michelle Whalen, a husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics, are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. Welcome to Insights into Entertainment. This is episode 102. Disneyland reopening and in your face. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my, what do we say today? Talented and <laughs> inspirational co-host, Michelle Whalen. Hi, everyone. How are you doing today, dear? I am feeling fine so far. So you have a button on. I do have a button on. I don't have mine on. Though. Let's go to this shot here. We get a, I we get given a shot you of the button. Maybe this one's closer. There we go. Yeah, I don't have my button on. So what does your button say? You're a little far away from the camera. My button says, I'm vaccinated. Yes, and, and I could wear one too. Yes, you certainly can. So it's a takeoff for, for those people that are in the Disney know, um, know that when you go down to the parks, uh, they have uh, various buttons that you can get for free. Um, they actually do sell certain ones now that are different. They're not the, the traditional ones. So they have ones, uh, that you, uh, say I'm celebrating my birthday or if it's your anniversary or if you got married down there or if you're on your honeymoon. And then they have generic ones so that if you're, you know, you're traveling with somebody, you can, you know, say that you're traveling or, you know, there for somebody's birthday right. or event as well. So obviously lots of people have jumped on the bandwagon and made their own version of these Disney buttons. So it says I'm vaccinated and it has Mickey and Minnie wearing a mask in front of, uh, oh, it's over here, yeah. <laughs> Cinderella's castle. And uh, the, the person that I bought this one from, from Etsy, you could actually get it where it says Walt Disney World, or you could even get it where it says Disneyland. And obviously I went with Walt nice. Disney World. So. so you are fully vaccinated. You have your two shots. Yeah, I just you're, had it at five o'clock today. So a so couple of hours. Two weeks for full vaccination yep. starts today. Right. And you um, are one week. I'm one week in from my mind started uh last, last week. monday yeah. last week last monday mm -hmm. so we are doing our part mm -hmm. to help the pandemic absolutely and uh, hopefully we'll have a little bit of freedom restored to uh, our lives once we're fully clear on the vaccination mm -hmm. so congratulations thank you so that's not what we're talking about today but it's nope. worth mentioning <laughs> Uh, so in today's episode, uh, in our Disney Detective, we will talk about Disneyland finally reopening, and Walt Disney World is going to be trying out some new facial recognition, so Disney is in your face. Taser face. Taser face. <laughs> uh, then in our Tales from the Edge of the Galaxy, will Star Wars be looking to have a woman of color as the next lead? Dun, dun, dun. We did have a very good woman of color in the uh, solo film. Unfortunately, she didn't make it through the whole film. Right, she didn't um, survive. But she played a very heroic oh, lead absolutely. and a very pivotal part in, the, in mm -hmm. the movie. So congratulations to that. Yeah. Uh, then we'll also talk about some of the classic 80 Star Wars shows coming to Disney. Mm -hmm. So we get to see those. Ewok, those damned Ewoks from the Ewok village of the Dan, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> then in our entertainment news, you want to buy a Jersey amusement park? We got one for sale. Yep. <laughs> we'll talk about that. And we'll talk about Boston declaring March 26th to be Leonard Nimoy Day, which I think is kind of late, but kind of cool because um, he's kind of passed away a few years ago, so they're a little late to the party on this right, one. Right, I get it, yeah. It's okay. <laughs> then we'll finish up with our insightful picks of the week, one of which I have a very 
offbeat pick that I don't normally do this category. So, uh, oh, now I'm intrigued. Yeah, that's that's the tease there. You gotta gotta wait till the end of the show for that one. (laughs) Right. Uh, Before we do get started, I would invite folks to subscribe to the podcast. You can get uh, audio versions of the podcast listed as insights in entertainment. Uh, We are also listed as insights into things for our video version. We're listed on Apple. Uh, Google, Spotify, Stitcher, pretty much any place you can get a podcast these days. We would also invite folks to reach out to us and give us your feedback. You can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. On Twitter, we are at insights underscore things. On Facebook, you can give us feedback at facebook.com slash insights into things podcast. On Instagram, we are at insights into things, or you can get us on our website, at www.insightsintothings.com. Before we get into it, though, one quick programming note. We mm-hmm. are changing our schedule up. Mm-hmm. Yep. So normally we would record on the weekends. Right. But for our spring and summer schedule, we're going to try recording evenings during the week. Mm-hmm. Uh, we seem to get more viewers during during the week watching our rebroadcasts. Plus, we want to do stuff on the weekends. Right. So it's, you know, not entirely you know, unselfish of us. Right. You know, that whole, we're vaccinated. We like to leave the house. Right. We'll we'll be able to leave the house at some point. Not that there's much going on yet, but there's, we want to leave that door open. (laughs) So for those of you who watch our live broadcast on the weekends, we are moving to Wednesdays and Tuesdays right around this time between six and seven. I thought Wednesday and Thursday. I'm sorry. Wednesday and Thursday. Right. (laughs) Uh, right around this time, between 6 and 7, we don't really have a set start time. It's really whatever's going on in the household at the time. Whenever we're done with dinner. Uh, but it's important for us to get <laughs> done at 8 because we have other things going on at 8. Right. <laughs> so we have, a, we have a set date at 8 o'clock. So anyway, uh, that's it for our public service announcement. Uh, are we ready to get into it? Sure. All right. <laughs> That's the wrong soundboard. I I didn't switch the soundboards. Hang on. Wait. I got it. Hold on. There we go. There we go. (laughs) I was like. Now I need a laugh track. Now why are you (laughs) laughing at me? Go for Disney Detective. So this was exciting news that came out uh, a couple of, I guess it was about two weeks ago now, um, was that Disneyland finally has a reopening date. Um, uh, They will be reopening on April 30th. Um, They'll be, you know, welcoming guests in. It's obviously going to be a much different uh, atmosphere, kind of, you know, to the same uh, uh, level that uh, when Walt Disney World opened, they're kind of kind of be doing the same thing. So there's not going to be the uh, parades. uh, There's not going to be the fireworks. um, There's not going to be fast passes or the magical mornings, um, but they are going to be you know, trying to plus it in other ways. Um, So right now uh, they're going to be um, per California's uh, guidance for the red tier. The park will be opened at 15% capacity and only Florida residents at this point will be able to visit. Um, And if you figure only 15% is going in, that means smaller crowds will obviously give you a better ride experience, limited capacities in stores, and give people space to shop without the crowds. Um, You know, so for many, the trade-off of having to wear a mask and being stationary while eating or drinking will be worth the experience of not having the park so crowded. So while Disney doesn't actually release attendance numbers, DisneyNews.us estimates that Disneyland had about 51,000 visitors per day across the parks in uh, 2019. So at 15%, the park would cap at just about 20,000 people uh, per day. So that's not really very crowded. So if you can, you know, manage to get a reservation, you know, to visit, obviously, you know, and and you feel safe enough going, not a bad time to go. Um, so 
obviously the way that they're doing this is the same way that they did, uh, that they're still doing with Magic Kingdom um, with Walt Disney World, is that you have to make a reservation for a specific day uh, when you go to purchase uh, your ticket. Um, as of right now, tickets have not gone on sale yet. Um, and Disney basically says, keep checking back our website, um, you know, for for updates. So as of um, the other day, they hadn't released uh, when it was going to be uh, open. But they said, you know, one of the things is Space Mountain will have probably a zero minute wait, which is it never has. So this is your one and, and only opportunity to, you know, to go to the park. Um, you know, it's almost like a private party, really, you know, when you think about a uh, when you think about it. Um, so again, they're going to be doing, uh, so instead of doing the parades like they would normally do, they're going to be doing the character cavalcades, what they call it, where basically just like one or two floats will go down Main Street and it's never at the same time. So they randomize it. So this way there's nobody standing around waiting, um, you know, for a crowd to gather. So it's just kind of, you have to be in the right place at the right time you know, for it to happen. The other thing too, is that they um, have been doing a lot of renovations because the park has been closed now for over a year. So they were already starting to make some changes to some of the rides. So now they've been taking this time um, to, to finish up some of these things. So one of uh, the big things is that uh, Snow White's a uh, scary adventure has now been changed over to Snow White's Enchanted Wish. So they totally uh, renovated that. Um, and they uh, so now there's a scene where there's a dancing figure of Snow White who's joining the dwarfs in their cottage as the scent of apple pie uh goes through the air uh the other thing that came out um is that they were adding some new magic to the haunted mansion so um there have been a couple of articles but nothing's actually said what it was so that'll be kind of fun to see um when the park actually opens what they kind of plussed with that uh the other thing is in disney california adventure uh, the new avengers campus is almost completely open so while it won't be open when the park opens on the 30th it's not going to be too far behind um so that'll be you know kind of something to to look forward to um obviously some of the shows that they've had in the past won't be opening up and probably won't ever open back up or at least not for a couple of years but at least you know they're making changes to other things to kind of you know give you a a good experience uh for going so just to clarify both parks both parks um no announcement on how many reservations they're going to be allowing per day right because they never really t- say what their you know the the guesstimate was 20,000 guests per day uh the other thing too is some of the hotels are going to start accepting reservations for like i think 2 days before park opens or 1 day before park opens so various other amenities uh, will be opening up as well. What about hours? Are they running uh, abbreviated hours? They haven't. Or yeah, as of right now, they haven't mentioned anything beyond we're opening on the the thirtieth. Any preferential treatment for people staying at the at the Disney hotels there? I don't think so. I because they're doing you know, um California residents. I don't, you know, I would hope if you're making a hotel reservation, that kind of helps you a little bit. But, right. um, you know, I think in, in a lot of cases, it's probably first come, first serve. Okay. Well, <clears throat> good news. We're moving in the right direction. Absolutely. Uh, what else do we have to talk about? Let's talk about Disney getting in your face. <laughs> right. So now we're going to go from the West Coast over to the East Coast. So it seems that facial recognition technology was tested uh, Tuesday morning at the entrance of the Magic Kingdom. Walt Disney World has shifted in recent months to utilizing more of a touchless technology, and the newest addition could be a touchless entry 
to the theme parks through facial recognition. So the test was optional on Tuesday morning and testing will continue sporadically. Uh, The test was only conducted for a a short period of time. Uh, The testing takes place in three easy steps. Guests begin by entering a designated facial recognition testing lane. And then after that, guests are instructed to remove any hats or visors or sunglasses before approaching the recognition uh, testing zone. Guests will need to position their magic band or valid admission uh, close to the scanner to activate the technology. And then the technology will capture an image and convert it into a unique number that is associated with your valid ticket. Disney added um, that uh, security, integrity, and confidentiality of your information are extremely important to us. And they go on to state that the images are only ca- uh, the images that are captured will only be stored for 30 days, and that the images or unique numbers will not be shared with third parties. Uh, they also added that despite strict security measures, no security measures are perfect or impenetrable. So. Nice of them to have a little uh, caveat there that, <laughs> hey, you know, we're going to be really secure except for when we're not secure. Right. We're not really sure. And so let me ask you, how do you feel about this? Well, you figure they have my fingerprint <laughs> every time, you know. They... Well, but do they can do they keep the fingerprint for 30 days or is that kept indefinitely? I don't know. because Well, think about it. When if you have an annual pass it's the full year it's it's a full 12 months that but they how keep are they it. handling that with facial recognition well they didn't you know at this point they're just maybe it's one of those every month you have to redo right your your facial recognition any any statistics on how long it takes for the process to happen no again this was uh the article uh was popped up on uh wdwnt.com And it was just one of those, somebody happened to be there and they saw it going on. So it was just kind of a a spur of the moment thing. They were testing it, I guess, probably to see. They're probably doing time testing, I'm sure. Right. uh, To see how long it takes to, you know, to set it up. Because facial recognition isn't a new technology. We we experienced Mm -hmm. it when we went to Hershey. Right. They were doing, uh, well, they weren't doing facial recognition. They were doing facial scanning for thermal right, scanning. Right, for thermal for scanning, temperatures. right. Um, I happen to have those same exact scanners at my office. Mm-hmm. And the back end of that allows you to create a database of employees. Mm-hmm. And you, once the employee scans in, you can go into the database and then add their unique information. Mm-hmm. So that the next time they come through and it scans them, it actually logs them into the system as themselves with mm-hmm. the facial recognition. Right. And that's near instantaneous. Uh, I'm curious how the scanning with the magic band and how far away you have to be because one of the things with facial recognition is there's generally a, a maximum distance and a minimum right. that you have to be in that sweet spot. Right. Um, you have to have certain lighting conditions. Right. Um, and one of the problems they've traditionally had with facial recognition has been scanning certain skin tones. Mm-hmm. For instance, African Americans right. have traditionally had significant issues right. accurately scanning mm-hmm. because of the darker skin tones. Right. But we've seen that even happen uh, uh, in other technology with uh, uh, Hispanic and Asian. Mm-hmm. You know, the the technology seems to be. Um, geared and and optimized for Caucasians. Right. And that's not what you get at no. Disney. You get wa- every You get everybody there. <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm also curious how it handles facial hair. Right. Um, you know, I go in there with a full beard today. I may shave tomorrow while I'm at the park because it's too hot. Does it does it scan me at that right. point? Right, right. Uh, you say you have to take off hats and, and masks and everything else, which... I don't know how long you're without your mask at that point, too. Right. And it's probably <clears throat> just, you know, for anybody that's gone, if you have a multi-day ticket, you have to do the fingerprint thing. So really, this is taking place of, because you still have to have your magic band, you still have to have your your park pass, and this is just that 
that extra level so that this way somebody else isn't using your pass. Right. So when you would normally go, you would do the fingerprint reader and your first time using your pass, it takes a couple extra seconds because they, you know, they need to record your fingerprint to match it up. Well, and like it fails one out of every seven times too. <laughs> exactly. Because that's why they have the cast member sitting there to just hit the button and be right. like, all right, just go. Um, I don't know. So, I'm not I don't entirely know. comfortable having Disney have another piece of you right. know, biometric and information. And that's the thing is, me. you know, at this point, it's it's optional. They're, you know. And this is just for admission. This is not for fast passes or anything. Yeah, this, this is point. just <clears throat> getting in the park. And I'm guessing, again, if it's something where you don't have a multi-day park ticket, then you wouldn't have to do this. And so. right now, you can't park hop still, right? Uh, I think park hopping actually did start. Start this month, I thought. So then my next question is, does it work park hopping or do I have to scan in for each park? Well, you'd have to, you, you have to scan in each park anyway when you park Well, no, no, what I'm saying is like, do oh, I do have you, to. To redo it right, again. Right. right. I, I'm thinking once you do it the first time, you don't have to redo because usually all their systems are, yeah. are connected. So any, any, uh expected date on when they plan to roll this out in production no again this was just kind of like hey we were at the park and we saw this happening so we're going to write a little story about it gotcha so i'm well, sure we'll hear more you know as it comes they're out, definitely so. in a, you know uh incorporating the newer technology mm -hmm. um, doing it without being a touch list makes a lot more sense mm -hmm. so maybe this is a sign of the new normal yeah so that was all we had for our Disney detective today. We'll take a quick break and we'll be right back with our Tales from the Edge of the Galaxy and the right intro music this time. Okay. <laughs> for over seven years, the Second Sith Empire has been the premier community guild in the online game Star Wars The Old Republic. With hundreds of friendly and helpful active members, a weekly schedule of nightly events, annual guild meet and greets, and an active community both on the web and on Discord. The Second Civ Empire is more than your typical gaming group. We're family. Join us on the Star Forge server for nightly events such as operations, flashpoints, world boss hunts, Star Wars trivia, guild lottery, and much more. Visit us on the web today at www.thesecondsithempire.com. for Tales from the Edge of the Galaxy. <laughs> so uh, in an article uh, that came out this week from giantfreakingrobot.com. See, I like just saying that just because. Just Could you bring a, you get one from them each week, it looks like now. <laughs> I try. Well, they're, they're really good. Uh, so uh, the article that they had was uh, talking about how Star Wars is committed to having a woman of color lead in the next franchise. So, you know, obviously it's a little too early uh, to, to get a commitment um, about what the cast uh, would look like. But according to insider Daniel Reitman, uh, for the next trilogy of movies, they are committed to having a woman of color take the lead uh, in whatever story is told. Um, so again, very early, you know, we don't really know much of what the next trilogy is going to be because obviously Rise of Skywalker just uh, finished its trilogy run in 2019. But it looks like they're, you know, thinking about how they want to kind of go with, uh, you know, the next step. So obviously the intention is that the next Star Wars franchise uh, will be set with, you know, a very female led roster uh, with a group of women leading the film and driving the story. Uh, considering the history of the franchise, it is in, you know, a total, you know, change for them because obviously we've seen them kind of change that um, in recent years. Uh, obviously with, you know, The Force Awakens and, and the newer trilogy, 
you had Ray as one of the main characters. Uh, so, you know, and some other, you know, female leads, you know, as well to help the story. So it'll be interesting to kind of see, you know, where they go with this. Um, obviously, the same can be said for st- uh, Star Wars series on Disney Plus. Uh, we had the Mandalorian uh, that came off, and now we're going to have all these different offshoots um, from that. And Ahsoka Tana, uh, played by Rosario Dawson, is set to get um, you know a, a show of her own. So you know they're kind of following uh, with that, and that is set for a 2022 uh, release date. So again. Not sure what their plan is. And again, because it's still kind of early, I'm sure they're they're still in the, um, you know, brainstorming phase of everything. But it'll be interesting to see where they go, you know, with it. I hope they do it right. And I hope they do it justice. Mm-hmm. And they don't make a, you know, an African-American lead, female lead just for the sake of having right. an African-American absolutely. female lead. I oh, hope absolutely. it's the right part. Mm-hmm. Like, for instance, Rosario Dawson. I couldn't have asked for a better person to fill that role. She did such a fantastic Absolutely. job. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I also hope that it's not a trilogy that's led by Ryan Johnson. I, <laughs> that's I true really because do because I want it to be good. <laughs> that's true because he's supposed to be getting, you know, isn't he, wasn't he's, he still going to be getting. He's supposed to get his trilogy. So yeah, my fear is that it's his. Yeah, that it, that's not. what they give to him. And then he yeah. tanks it like he did the, the <sighs> latest yeah. sequel Ooh, trilogy. Gave me bad chills. <laughs> yeah. So uh, when I say I hope to do it right, it includes getting the right director for it. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. So, and, you know, with Giant Freaking Robot announcing it, maybe J.J. Abrams comes back to do it. Maybe. Because, you know, he did a pretty good job at Force Awakens mm-hmm. and he did – an acceptable job trying to resurrect that steaming right. pile and, of manure well, that J- Ryan Johnson gave Exactly, us. and that's the thing. <clears throat> you know, you, you can't fault J.J. for too much because he was basically trying to fix everything. Uh, he was handed a disaster right. and was told to fix it. Yeah, it was like, here's all these broken pieces that I did, even though you handed me, you know... And that's, a great that place. was the worst part right. is that yeah. JJ did a, you know, he did a, a certainly an acceptable job. It was, it was a lot of fan service in Force Awakens. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. But he set the tone and there was a path moving forward. And then Johnson came in and, and just, just, just literally took threw the, the lights. lightsaber away. <laughs> I was just going to say, took the lightsaber away. You know, I mean, that's exactly what yeah. he did with, with what JJ Abrams did. And JJ yeah. Abrams had to come back in and pick the lightsaber up and try to put things back together. Right. right. And get all his kyber crystals and put them back together. Oh, see, look at that. You dropping all those big words there. See? So let's see, I'm awesome. Let's talk about the Ewok Village of the Damned. (laughs) So the beautiful forest moon of Endor is coming our way with the release of the Ewok shows and movies that dominated the 1980s. In a release from Disney on their April Disney Plus editions, we learn that Star Wars Ewok Season 1 and 2, Ewoks, The Battle of Endor, and the beautiful uh, the, and the story of the faithful Wookiee <laughs> um, are all headed to the streaming platform on uh, April 2nd. Um, so why is this so excited? Well, mainly because for decades, Star Wars fans who had only heard legends of these shows and movies are now going to actually get to watch them, you know, kind of like the holiday special, which thankfully they're not going to be putting on the streaming service. Um, so these have been kind of hard to find and, you know, forgotten stories, you know, in most cases, um, and with the story of the faithful Wookiee. That's currently only the bit of the um that the ho- that was part of the holiday special or that kind of led to, you know, the, the what the holiday special was, um you know, so obviously this will be kind of interesting for for people that have never seen or never heard of it to to watch. Um, so obviously, as most people know, the Ewok adventures are not part of Disney canon. Um, and much like the extended universe, uh, the Disney acquisition essentially erased anything that wasn't the live action movies 
and the Clone Wars. However, that doesn't mean that the Ewoks will forever be erased from Star Wars lore. Um, with them coming to Disney+, Plus, we could see maybe more of a connection in the live-action world or a shift as some characters have made the leap from the animated or novel world with shows like The Mandalorian. So, you know, now we'll be able to see Warwick Davis... Uh, you know, when he was a little younger, not that you can actually tell that it's him, but you'll be able to see Wicket, um, you know, and all of his little adventures uh, starting April 2nd on Disney+. Plus. So just for the record, <clears throat> these weren't that good. No. They, they weren't. They were slightly above the holiday special. Right. But that doesn't mean we shouldn't bring the holiday special back. <laughs> What I like about these is it's nostalgia. Right. You know, these were after Return of the Jedi. Mm -hmm. This was all you had in Star right. Wars. You yeah. didn't get anything else until Phantom Menace. Well, right. until until Shadows of the Empire came out and you got the novels and, and the video games around that. But it never turned into a, a movie franchise. Right. So if you're looking for entertainment movie or television right this is what you had so you had this you had droids uh caravan of carriage all that stuff so it's kind of neat to see them bring that stuff back mm -hmm. um i'm glad they're not making it canon um because there's a lot of holes right. plot holes in there um but just for the sake of nostalgia the kids that grew up with this stuff mm -hmm. we get to share it with our kids now right and and that's one of the things if you see and if you do any research, what is, you know, trending on various streaming services, in a lot of cases, there's that nostalgic show right. from, you know, now, the I'll 80s. I'll be honest. I have these. Right. You know, I have these on my media center right now. So mm -hmm. if I wanted to, I could go watch them right now. Right. But not everybody does. I have not watched them since I got them. <laughs> I got them for the sake of having them. Okay. Um. I'm not going to run out and watch these on streaming no. services either, probably. Is this going to be one of those things I have to watch at 8 o'clock with This is an 8 o'clock, oh, you know, date night with the daughter. <sighs> awesome. Um, you're, you're not going to join us? <laughs> but it, you know what? At least she gets to experience it now. True. Which is nice. Right. So kind of a little feel-good mm -hmm. thing there. Yeah. So, But that was all we had for our Tales from the Edge of the Galaxy. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back with our entertainment news of the week. Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Talking to real teens about real teen problems. Explore issues from braces to puberty, social anxiety to financial responsibility. Each week, we talk about the topics concerning today's youth. We look at how the issues affect teens, how to cope with these issues, and how parents, friends, and loved ones can help teens handle these challenges. Check out our video episodes on youtube.com backslash insights into things. Catch our audio versions on podcast.insightsintoteens.com or on the web at insightsintothings.com. Dum, 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 dum. Go for entertainment news. <laughs> You just can't resist. No, it's, you know, it's like, you know, you ring the bell, the dog barks or something <laughs> or whatever. So, hey, anybody want to buy a 114-year-old amusement park in Jersey? Uh, no. No. Okay. <laughs> so, a 114-year-old theme park in Clementon, New Jersey is about to go on the auction block. Uh, last Friday, interested buyers... Uh, visited the closed Clementon Amusement Park and Splash World, which is about 30 minutes outside of Philadelphia, to check out the park and the inventory ahead of the public auction uh, that was for uh, this week. Uh, Jersey.com reported that the park has almost 400 items on its inventory, including a 40-person arc swing, a 365-degree loop 
ride, a Ferris wheel, a train system complete with cooled propane engine, rail system, and three 18-foot long cars. Capital Recovery Group first announced that it was putting the park up for auction in February, and according to that announcement, the 22-acre theme park will be auctioned off in its entirety or will be sold as land, equipment, rides, buildings, and liquor license in pieces. Um, the president of the company had said we were are actively seeking a buyer for this iconic park located outside of Philadelphia and expect significant interest in this auction. The property includes a 25-acre lake, dam, amusement rides, a water park, and a full liquor license. According to their website, the property is being promoted as a turnkey or development uh, opportunity. The vice president of CRG had told uh, NJ.com that there is plenty of interest in the park. He said, uh, we have a lot of interest in the rides and smaller items. There have been people who talk about reopening it um, and others are talking about uh, other development uh, opportunities. He said, I've taken a tremendous amount of call, so we'll wait and see. Clementon Park was actually founded in 1907 and added its water park in the later years. The amusement park actually closed in uh, September of 2019. According to NewJersey.com, Clementon Park was assessed at $4.25 million in 2019. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) I'm not sure where the value is other than maybe in land. The land, you Um, you think? (laughs) You know, and again, we talk about nostalgia a lot on this show. Yes. and, And I spent a number of summers... Going to Clementon Park as a kid, that was what right. the attraction was down here. You know, up up further up in Jackson, we have Six Flags. We've right, got, which is where my hometown was and where I actually right. worked for many a summer. And what uh, what's it, Dorney Park? Dorney Park is out uh, in the Lehigh Valley area. Right. So there's a number of, of or you amusement have Hershey parks. Park. You have Hershey Park out there. There's right. a number of amusement parks. And then right. you have the shore and all the attractions down right. there. Right, right. Um, but... And I'll I'll say it again. You know, I didn't. My family did not have means when right. we were when I was younger. So that was the alternative that we went to, and mm-hmm. that was that was the inexpensive alternative that a lot of kids right wound up going to. Mm-hmm. Um, for the longest time, it boasted the oldest wooden roller coaster mm-hmm. in New Jersey, which I'm not really sure you want to boast about. <laughs> Uh, I had ridden not the roller coasters that are pictured on the, on the image we have here, but uh-huh. they had torn down the the wooden one years ago. But I had ridden that one, oh, I don't know, twenty five years ago, <laughs> and it was terrifying to ride. Not because it was a really scary roller coaster, but because you didn't know if it was going to fall apart while you were mm, riding it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so it made for an interesting. Uh, if not scary, ride for that reason alone. Mm-hmm. And and we were there, right? Uh, what f- six years ago, maybe longer than mm, that. Longer than that, because Maddie was probably only like two or three. So it was probably twelve years ago. Yeah, we were there. Yeah, and it was a ghost town. To yeah. call it an amusement park was just an insult well, to, to amusement park. And the first time that I had ever gone was actually with a company picnic now it wasn't my company i was going as a as a guest and it was kind of surprising because the company that you know used this as their um uh uh, company picnic it was just kind of like did did you guys even come here first you could you could have a company picnic they definitely had picnic tables right and well no because at the time when we had but that's gone, really all they had. well no because that was kind of the thing because your clientele was either really mostly the water park right or company and picnics. that's the thing what really right. revitalized this was when oh, they put the water park in it. absolutely when was that like the late 90s early something 2000s? like that yeah but what was funny was where most amusement parks or whatever, if there's a company picnic, everybody kind of goes through the main entrance. Well, they actually, at the time that I had gone to this company picnic, they actually had a separate entrance 
just for company picnics. Yeah. So you kind of parked around the back and you went in. So you didn't even. So if you were going for the company picnic, you didn't even have to go through the park. And of course, they had the liquor license. So as soon as you got to your pavilion, here's your big old keg of beer. Yeah. And that's where everybody hung out. So most of the people just kind of went to go eat and drink and left. Right. Where then you had, again, the the group that would go over to, you know, the water park. But then again, the, th- the amusement park was open, you know, into the fall, opened up in the, you know, late spring. So the water park wasn't always open. So if you happened to go during, you know, the dead of summer, the park might not be as crowded right. because everybody was over at the Well, and the in reality, area. what's likely to happen is they'll tear all the rides down. They'll probably sell the newer roller coasters off to another amusement park. Right. And they'll redevelop it. You'll get townhouses, you'll get condos, and you'll get, you know, the 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 emergency medical, you know, urgent cares, right. and probably a CVS. <laughs> probably. I mean, that's really what. But you're you have get the lake too, so I wonder how they're gonna, you know. And the dam. Don't forget about the <laughs> and dam. The, and the dam. That that uh, the dam yeah. is part of it. So yeah. uh, you so, know, maybe yeah. you put in a. a a housing community or something. Well, and that's why something. I think they're going to sell yeah. sell it for waterfront property mm-hmm. there. You put a promenade yeah. in there or something like that. You turn mm-hmm. it into commercial, mixed yeah, commercial, I residential. See that. um, that's probably the most likely thing because of all the development going on in the area. Now. Yeah, yeah. So, so I, I don't hold out hope that it's going to come back as an amusement park. But, you know, for the nostalgic part of me, wishes mm-hmm. that it would. Yeah. So let's let's talk about living long and prosper. So Boston is play, paying a special tribute to actor Lem, Leonard Nimoy, who would have turned 90 years old later this month. Mayor Marty Walsh is declaring his birthday, March 26th, to be Leonard Nimoy Day in the city. Uh, Nimoy, who died in 2015, was a Boston West End uh, was born in Boston's West End neighborhood neighborhood uh he'll always be remembered for portraying the logical pointy-eared spock in star trek and embracing the vulcans characters live long and prosper motto um walsh wrote that nimoy brought honor upon his native city with his accomplishments uh, accomplishments and gave the immigrant the refugee and the oppressed a hero for the outsider um he said i encourage all but Bostonians to recognize Leonard Nimoy's commitment and dedication to the arts and the lasting impact that it has left on the community. Uh, Nimoy's daughter, Julie, had shared the news of the proclamation on social media um, and had posted on Twitter as a special tribute to dad's life. The legacy and uh, the legacy, the city of Boston just announced that on his birthday, 326, will officially be Leonard Nimoy Day. Thank you, Mayor Marty Walsh, for supporting this proclamation. Um, Now, just as a side note, Boston University had actually awarded Nimoy an honorary degree back in 2012. Oh, that's cool. And, you know, he was probably one of the biggest trendsetters of the time. Mm-hmm. You know, he took a role that was controversial, mm-hmm. that was unique. Um, but even outside of Star Trek, he had such a fantastic career before mm-hmm. Star Trek and and, and after Star Trek. Mm-hmm. So. Definitely a well-accomplished and, you know, a well-deserved honor, mm-hmm. you know, posthumously awarded. So. Mm-hmm. so that was all we had for our entertainment news. Mm-hmm. We will be right back with our insightful picks of the week. <laughs> I clicked off my one monitor, so I'm, <laughs> I'm all confuzzled now. Oh, geez. We'll, we'll be right back with our insightful picks of the week. Go for your insightful pick. So my insightful pick of the week is a uh, documentary called The Last Blockbuster. Um, I actually just kind of happened to find it on Netflix. I had kind of knew some of the the story behind it, but it was a very interesting look, uh, you know, behind the scenes of everything. So this nostalgic documentary reveals the real story Um, of Blockbuster's demise and how one last location in Oregon keeps the spirit of a bygone era alive. The documentary tells the story of Blockbuster Video, the video rental business, 
um, and explores how the video rental company put independent uh, video rental stores out of business by striking deals with the film studios and how these deals, um, you know, were known as revenue share deals and allowed Blockbuster to no- negotiate lower prices than their local counterparts in exchange for a cut of the rental fees. Um, the film follows Sandy Harding, uh, who is the general manager of the last store over a course of a couple of years. Um, and then there are various actors that kind of um, give their input throughout. So you have Kevin Smith, you know, talking about the business. Um, and then other um, interviews with other celebrities, uh, Adam Brody, Sam Levin, um, uh, Doug Benson, uh, you know, a whole bunch of different people kind of come in and out. And actually what's kind of cool is, you know, at one point, one of them actually goes and visits the location. So it's really interesting to kind of see because when the documentary, when they started filming this, there were 18 locations still operating you know in the united states and then the following year it was down to four with three of them being in alaska which was kind of funny and one being in in oregon and then the last three in uh alaska closed and you know here's this last one in in oregon and you know, up until the very end of the the movie, the documentary, you don't know if they're going to survive or not. Um, so it was just really well done, and and you know, for you know, people of our ages that under you know that remember going to the video rental, you know, stores and and picking up your movie on a Friday night, and you know, walking around for an hour <laughs> trying to figure out what you're gonna, you know, watch. It's again, it's that whole nostalgia of it um and you know it's 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 funny to see what you know sandy does to kind of keep the business going and she's still maintaining it you know to this day and she put so much heart in it and i think that's you know in you know you see it's not just about video rental it's the customer service it's the the you know the interaction uh that she has with with the public and that's what you know keeps it going so it's good to see that you know in even though it's a corporate entity it's really a mom and pop you know uh business you know these days so cool nice pick thanks So my pick this week, as I said, is a little off the wall. So before before I get into it, I have to kind of set it up. So I am one of those vidiots uh, that around Christmas time sat online and clicked refresh a million times so I could <laughs> buy a next generation console. Okay. Uh, I had to settle for an Xbox Series S, not an X. Uh, but one of the things that I did do was I uh, had subscribed to the Xbox Game Pass Ultimate which on the console, the ultimate gives you access to a bunch of available video games and so forth and your Xbox Gold and all that. But what it also gave you on the console was EA Play, which is all of EA's library of games that you can download and play over and over without paying for them individually. Now, at the time that I had subscribed, they were supposed to be releasing, now I had bought it, bought the console early December uh, and the subscription around the same time, they were supposed to release EA Play for PC on the 18th, and they delayed. And then they were going to release in February, and they delayed. And then over and over, they delayed. Well, I'm happy to report that EA Play is now available for Xbox Game Pass for PC and for console. Woohoo! For Ultimate members. Um It's been available since uh, November on uh, consoles, but just recently it opened up for beta use on the PCs um, through the EA desktop app, which you download and and, uh, set up on your PC. Uh, The next generation PC platform that's currently in open beta and the Xbox app on Windows 10, members will receive access to EA Play and get exclusive in-game challenges and rewards a collection of outstanding games in the playlist, as well as discounts on purchases of EA digital content and trial access to full versions of the select new releases. Now I'm paying, I think 14 a month for the ultimate. 
Okay. Gives me EA Game Pass and Xbox Game Pass, on, EA Play and Xbox Game Pass on both platforms. There are certain games that they just run better on, on a PC. You know, there are games that are graphic intensive that a gaming PC just works better. Um, for instance, one of the games that I play is Battlefield Five. I've been playing that a lot on console, and it's okay. You know, it's it, it plays well, but you know, I play it on a sixty-five inch TV downstairs, but it's a single screen. Okay. Well, the first thing I downloaded was Battlefield Five to try it out. So I have it with my gaming headset on. I have it on three screens, panoramic. And it's just a completely different experience. It's so immersive on the PC. Um, you have access to all of the library of Star Wars games, the original Battlefront 1 and 2, uh, Empires, uh, uh, Fallen Order. You have access to all the Star Wars games if you're a game fan. Um, and the number of games that you have available, it's huge. And you have the ability to download any of these games and play them as long as they're on, because they do cycle, they tend to cycle some of the games through there, uh, but most of the new ones. So the new ones come out there and you can download the new ones and try them out. If it's something that you, you enjoy and you want to keep playing, you can buy it. And I think it's a 10% discount that you get if you buy them through uh, the EA Play Store. So I just got it um, over the weekend and... I, I have to kick the tires for a little bit there, but I'm I'm very excited that it's available on PC. That is EA Play for PC, now available through Xbox Game Pass Ultimate. Very cool. And we'll be right back. So I think that was all we had today. Mm -hmm. I think this midweek uh, podcast went well. Yep. Um. Hopefully we'll keep it up so we can have our weekends back to ourselves. Mm -hmm. uh, we still will be releasing them uh, on the on the um, pod stream, podcasting streams, um, Monday mornings at 8. Uh, all this does is it buys me more time to do the uh, uh, post-processing for everything. Right. Um, before we go, I would invite folks to subscribe to the podcast. You can get us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, or TuneIn, or anywhere you can get a podcast. Audio versions are listed as insights into entertainment. Video versions of all of our podcasts are listed as insights into things. We do stream uh, six days a week on Twitch at twitch.tv slash insights into things. If you have a an Amazon um, Prime membership, you do get a free monthly uh, Twitch Prime subscription. Uh, we'd appreciate it if you could throw that our way. It helps us keep the lights on around here. Uh, we also invite you to give us your feedback. You can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. You can find us on Twitter at insights underscore things. We are, as I said, on Twitch at twitch.tv slash insights into things. You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com backslash insights into things podcast. On Instagram, we are at insights into things. Uh, the audio versions of all of our podcasts can be found at podcast.insightsintoentertainment.com. You can get high-res versions of our videos on YouTube at youtube.com slash insights into things. And obviously our main website, if you can't remember any of all those other places to find us, is insightsintothings.com. And that's it. Another one in the books. Have a good week, everyone. Bye. Bye.